Come on in, Mary. We're playing blind man's bus and you're it. Wait a minute. You've got to pay me first. Always it's the woman who pays and pays and pays. You think not? <laughs> Hey, Quill, that's Come on, leave her alone. We'll go out of it. Give me a break. I'll give you a break. I'll break you. Hey, Corbett, pipe down them flaming youths or find yourself another fat. This ain't no speakeasy. I know it's the Biltmore, but who moved it over here to 3rd Avenue? <laughs> <laughs> She's funny that way. Let's pipe down. Yeah. Come on, Mary, give me a cup. Hello, Mary, how are you? Hello, Mary. What kept you so long? Listen, I know a good quiet game if you boys won't dirty it up. Oh, we won't. Let's play truth. What's truth? It's a big moment for the boys. They can ask you any question they like, and you have to tell the truth. <laughs> oh, that's my game. <laughs> oh, local boy gets a break. I'm going to be dumb and not learn how. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Harry. You take a chance. Not me. I'm not here. Oh, you... Oh, oh my my God. God. <laughs> I got to hide. It's going to be good if you know what I mean. <laughs> Come on, now. Well, who are you? The name is Mary. And who is Mary? A working girl. <laughs> <laughs> the kind that heaven protects? Up to now. <laughs> In love? Sure. Who with? A man. <laughs> What's his name? Even the census taker wouldn't ask a question like that. Oh. <laughs> Guess that'll hold you for a couple. <laughs> uh -huh. Pass her by, handsome. I'm a grass widow. You can go as far as you like. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> the villain still pursues her. Say, that's a swell way to get acquainted, that game. Let's go a step further. I'll buy you, Violet. <laughs> Who's the lucky man? The one you're in love with? He's a big paper man. All wrapped up in your boss, I know. You should see my boss. He's so old, the short skirts came in 20 years too late for him to appreciate legs. Even yours? My turn now. Shoot. Name, color, present condition of servitude. Ronald Wales. White, poor, honest. Ambition? Not to have to work for a living. So I could go to the south of France and write a book. What do you do for a living besides kissing strange girls in hallways? I work in a broker's office. In love? I am not. Married, then? I don't believe in marriage. That's not a new line. Well, now it's my turn. Did you like my kissing you? We're playing truth, you know. Yes. And yet you say you're in love with another man. A man who called you Miss uh, Landy when your name is Lyndon obviously isn't on kissing terms. And I'm human, believe it or not. <laughs> I believe it so completely that I'm going to stake you to another little kiss. Do I have to? You do. Well, far be it from me, dearie. But Freddy's established illegal relations with the drugstore, and the gin awaits without. Without us. He can finish telling you the story of his life in the kitchen. I'd be just as safe right here in the bedroom. Yes, but with you two in the kitchen, a girl can powder her nose. Come on.
Good night, Ronnie. You must come to the races with us again sometime. Oh, I'd love to. Good night, Mr. Landy. Lyndon, you fool. Her name is Lyndon. I know, but Mary likes men who forget her name. Good night, Dolores. Good night, Mary. Oh, Scray. <laughs> you certainly fell for Ronnie like the breaking up of a hard winter. In the first place, I didn't. In the second place, what's it matter when he's just a handsome young Romeo with literary ambitions that make him a practically no use to a girl? Say that again. He's just a poor, harmless, charming young idiot who thinks that marriage would ruin him as an author. Ronnie Wales is worth two million dollars. What? Nice, isn't it? But call your shot, Mary. I hear his wife's nice, too. His wife? I hear the kids are grand. Twins, boys, what a man. Well, what a sap I've been. But why did he want to give me a song and dance like that? Oh, some say their wives are invalids. Some say their wives don't understand them. And some just say they're not married. I forgot to send that wire to the Wisconsin Mills. I sent it after lunch. Oh, well, that's fine. Say, you know I forgot all about that sales meeting tomorrow? The sales department's been notified. Veteran Company. Listen up. Thank goodness you never forget anything, do you? You do, though. Uh, what now, Mary? Oh, my medicine. Well, I forgot that purposely. You take it when you get home. Yeah, yeah, all right. Good night, Mr. Ritter. Back a gun, girlie? Well, Mr. Dunneen. Well, 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 it's Mr. Uh, Linden. Sure, Linden. Would you mind waiting a few moments in the sales department? Always glad to oblige. <laughs> arteries. And when's the old duck going to pass out and give us young fellows a chance? Mr. Ritter's going to be on hand longer than some of the rest of us, perhaps. There's a dirty crack in that somewhere, but Deneen passes it by. The name is Mary, isn't it? Why don't we get the Crown Publishing Company's account? Office hours are from 9 to 5.30. Did you ever try wearing your hair a little fluffier? How close have you come to getting together with the Crown people? Hey, listen, if I can't sell them, they can't be sold. Run your handsome blue eyes down there. Hmm. This seems to be a confidential memorandum of the Crown's yearly requirements. They'll take that order at three and a half percent off list. Yeah? And I'll buy twenty dollar gold pieces for nineteen bucks. Mr. Ritter's going to offer the Crown people three and a half percent off for that order tomorrow. Say, listen. Ritter wouldn't offer three and a half percent off for... 
You know, that's a remarkable coincidence. That's my idea exactly. In fact, I was going to sound them out on a discount basis the first thing in the morning and see if Britta would approve it. But I've just been wasting your time. Not at all, girly, not at all. You meant well. I was just ahead of you, that's all. Mr. Bronson lives at 478 Park Avenue. He left his office about 10 minutes ago. You can catch him if you go right after him. Consider that Deneen is on his way. But why the night work, girly? Well, Mr. Ritter, not being in your confidence, is going to personally telephone Mr. Bronson that discount at 8.30 a.m. And you won't get credit for the order. Hey! Let me know when I can do you a favor sometime. You can do me one right now. Name it, girly. Try and remember that my name is Lyndon. Well, of course it's Lyndon. Hey, plug me in on the switchboard, will you? I want to break a blonde's heart. You big businessmen are so brutal. <laughs> I know I shouldn't have listened, but at the same time, little girls shouldn't give away confidential tips to cheap salesmen. Why not give an ambitious youngster a break? Jim Deneen is no good. Hold your job long enough and you'll see Jim Deneen, the head of this company. Out of a city of six million people, why do you have to pick him? You weren't here when I first started, two years ago. It was my first job. I was scared to death. I'd have run away if it hadn't been for Jim Deneen. What'd he do? Offer to show you the pictures in his flat? He found me crying in the hall. Kidded me along. Told me to keep up a bluff. And everybody in the world was bluffing. Oh, he don't look like no big brother to me. So I've just tried to pay him back for the way he helped me. You're goofy about him. Maybe. He don't even know you wear silk stockings. I'm protecting my job, too. Someday, Jim will be the boss here. 